Hello and welcome to uh, the first video of Understanding Neural Nets with TensorFlow. My name is Ian and uh, I'm going to teach you uh, from the very beginning to maybe an intermediate level of how uh, neural networks work. Now I don't want to start off too complicated so I'm going to start with a very easy problem and that is um, trying to create the line of best fit. So we're just going to be making a line on a neural net but we're going to train uh, how to get our um, line of best fit very similar to the way we're going to be training our neural nets. So I'm going to try and introduce you to uh, the al training algorithm as well as um, some very simple machine learning um, terminology, okay? So here we have our X and our Y data. Now I'm going to call this our input data and uh, the Y I'm going to call it our uh, label data. So we're doing supervised learning so that means we are using data we know the answer to to help our prediction. So we're gonna try and get a line uh, that draws right across here. And what we wanted to do is uh, be very close to the real data so we can send in data we don't know and then get the, an accurate prediction, okay? So we're making a line. So remember y equals mx plus b. Now I'm going to change this to um, some very simple terms. So instead of Y, I'm going to call it the prediction. Um, you might also see this as H of X. Um, that's more in like uh, textbooks. And the H just kind of means our hypothesis, okay? Don't worry about that now. Um, the slope of the line M, uh, I'm going to change that to W, and that's going to be our weight. And that's a, we're going to see that a lot later on. Um, our input data, I'm just going to keep it as an X, which is running out of room. And our B is going to be our bias. So this is the Y intercept in the line, but that's going to be our bias there. So there are four steps to training uh, an algorithm. Uh, first, we got to get, get the prediction of our model. Okay, so let's make a, a model. Now, we don't know uh, the best value for our weight right now. So what we're going to do is stochastically initialize it. Stochastically is like a statistics term for random. So we're just going to get a random number, roll a dice, one to six, and then initialize our, our prediction model's weight with that number. So uh, let's pick three. So our weight is going to equal three. And uh, for now, uh, I'm not going to worry about the bias right now because it's just a little easier. So, so we got to get our prediction of the model. So let's draw our line. So it's our slopes three. So it's going to look maybe something like that. Okay, and then we got to get our our prediction. So we send in our input data, and then we get our prediction out. So we send in zero to. Um, uh, let's go. Prediction equals 3x. So we send in our x and then we get our prediction out. So we send 3x, it's 0, we get 0 out, we get, we send in 1, we get 3, 2, we get 6, and then 3.1, I don't know, 3.9.3, I don't know. So that's how we get our prediction of the model. Okay, step 2 in our training algorithm calculate our loss. Now how are we going to get our loss? Well we have uh, our predictions. We know the right answer with our label data and what we're going to do is something called mean squared error. So that is um, h of x minus y squared. So that's a squared error. Or no, I'm using prediction. Okay, prediction is just going to be p. So we we're just squaring it to get rid of negative numbers. Don't worry about that. So uh, we can even do absolute error. There's mean absolute error. Uh, you'll see that in more computers. But so we have our prediction. We have our label data, and then we square it. We add them all up, and then divide them by the number of um, you know data we have. So we'll take our, our errors. Uh, square them and then divide by 
four, I guess. And that's uh, our mean squared error, okay? So I'm gonna calculate that. Okay, so let's get working on the loss. So we get our prediction when we send in uh, our input data into our uh, function. So we get uh, zero times three, that's gonna give us zero. We're gonna subtract it by our label, which is zero. Then we're gonna square it. And that is going to equal zero. Okay, we do the same thing in the next one. We take our uh, one, we put it into our three X, we get three. We subtract 1.1 and then we square it. So we get 2.9 square is 3.61. I calculated this ahead of time. I'm not that good at squaring, so don't worry. Uh, two times three is six, minus 2.3, square it, we get 13.69, and 3.1 times three, 9.3, we subtract 3.5, we square it, and we get 33.64. Okay. Now what we're gonna do is add all these up and then divide by four. And that's gonna give us a loss that is 12.73. Okay, pretty easy stuff. Okay, so that leads us to step three of our training algorithm. Uh, use an optimizer. Okay, so how do we do that? Uh, let's get an actual another graph, and this is going to help us um, really get our fine tune our algorithm. So, so instead of the x, we're actually going to put our parameters theta, which is our weight or I guess the slope in this case, and on our y, uh, we're going to calculate our loss. So uh, let's plot this. We get uh, when our parameter is three, we get a loss of 12.73, I think we said. Now our goal is to find the parameter that gives us the lowest possible loss. So you think about it, when our loss is zero, uh, we've adjusted our slope in such a way that when we calculate our prediction and our real values, the loss is gonna be close to zero. So that's what we're going to try and find in this graph. So our loss isn't great, and we want to find the parameter that gives us a loss of one. So or a loss of zero. So well, it's going to be one. I can see it right now. And two, it's probably going to be, I guess here, maybe a little, maybe here. Now let's see when it's negative one, we're also going to get a, uh, a loss is going to be going to be positive again. So this is just kind of rough, us, or rough estimates of mine. And let's look at this. So you can see the farther we go away from one, the greater our error is going to be. And the closer we get to one, the uh, smaller our, our loss is going to be. So how do we get from three to one? We can map this out. And what we're going to do is find the, the greatest rate of change that's uh, going to be a steepest descent. Now, uh, in multivariable calculus, there's a way of mathematically doing this, and that's calculating the gradient. I'm going to spell this wrong. But right now, we're just doing two dimensions, so um, the greatest rate of change is just going to be simply the derivative. Okay. Hopefully, you, uh, you understand a bit of uh, simple calculus like this, so... Uh, you should know simple derivatives. If not, you know, check out another video. But... Okay, so we have our, uh, our gradient, and we're going to take it that in the um, in the negative direction. We're going to be descending. So this what we're doing right now is called gradient descent because it's gradient and it descends. Okay. Now the the amount of change we do in the x direction. It's going to be determined by our step size as well as the slope of this gradient. Now, our step size, I'm going to give it a term. Uh, let's go here. The learning rate. This is the rate at which we learn. 
right? That's probably where it gets the name. So what we're going to do is take the slope of this, multiply it by our learning rate, and shift our parameter in that direction, in the x direction. So when we do that, we're going to end up maybe here. And that leads us to step four, update. The update, that says update. Sorry about my hand, right? Update our parameters. And that is basically our algorithm. So what we do is we'll, we'll maybe we'll land on two. And then we'll go right back to the step number one, which is get a prediction of the model. So maybe we'll do a line to be like this or something like that. We calculate our loss. So we change this to a two. Should have erased that. So our prediction model is going to now going to be 2x. We calculate our loss. We use our optimizer, our gradient descent, to shift in the, in the direction that's going to give us closer to zero. And then we're going to update it again. So then maybe we're here. We're going to update it, and we're going to land on 1. We update our parameters. So this is going to be 1x. And when we plug that in, it's going to give us a line that's pretty close to that and the loss is going to be zero. So what we basically do is repeat these four steps over and over again, adjusting our parameters in a way that's going to give us um, the loss that's the lowest. And that is basically how you train um, a neural net. Now, neural nets are gonna be a little more complicated. Right now, we only work with one parameter. Uh, you can even have hundreds of thousands of parameters, so it's, it's gonna scale up, but the, the logic of this kind of continues throughout and uh, a lot of the math kind of scales up as well so um, uh, that's all I'm going to do for this video uh, thanks for watching uh, like like subscribe leave a comment promote it on uh, YouTube algorithm and other than that uh, have a great day